Here's a really cool double integral sent to me by a subscriber. It's the double integral from 0 to 1 of x plus y times the natural logarithm of x minus xy plus y dx dy. So it's a pretty cool structure, and the final result is really nice as well. And how exactly do we approach this? Well, we're going to make use of some symmetry, and that symmetry will become clear once I multiply out the x plus y term. So carrying out the multiplication, I now have the double integral from 0 to 1 of x times the natural logarithm of x minus xy plus y dx dy plus the double integral from 0 to 1 again of, terribly sorry about that, y times the natural logarithm of x plus y minus xy again dx dy. Now, let's shift our focus onto the second double integral. Notice that if I perform a transformation that takes x to y and vice versa, then what I get is the double integral, again from 0 to 1, our limits are not affected, of the y term turns into an x. Now, x plus y is still x plus y whereas x times y is also, again, x times y. But you're now integrating first with respect to y and then with respect to x. Notice how the integrands are now identical. The only difference is the order of integration, which, again, does not matter in this case because, like Fubini's theorem, whenever we're integrating a continuous function of both the variables involved, we can switch up the order of integration. So I could modify this to write it as dy dx, meaning integration first with respect to y and then with respect to x. So that means, by virtue of the symmetry we've just uncovered, that i equals twice the double integral from 0 to 1 of x times the natural logarithm of x plus y minus xy, integration first with respect to y and then with respect to x. And there's a reason I want to integrate first with respect to y rather than x. And that's because I can take this x term outside the first integration operator and write this as twice the integral from 0 to 1 of x times the integral from 0 to 1 of log x plus y minus xy dy dx. And I can evaluate this integral with respect to y quite nicely using an integration by parts approach. So let's call this i sub 1, the integral from 0 to 1 of natural log x plus y minus xy dy. So we're holding x constant and we're integrating with respect to y. So on integration by parts, I get this y term times the logarithm of x plus y minus xy limits being 0 and 1, minus the integral from 0 to 1, integrated function being y, and we need the derivative of this logarithmic function with respect to y, which would give me x plus y minus xy, and for the numerator, by the chain rule, we have 1 minus x. Okay, so far so good. And now to evaluate the first term in the limits as y approaches 0 and 1. So as y approaches 0, it's no brainer, you get a 0. But as y approaches 1, we get logarithm x plus 1 minus x. So the x's cancel out, and we have log 1, which is a 0. Okay. So we're rid of the first term, and we're left with the negative of the integral from 0 to 1 of y times 1 minus x divided by x plus y minus xy dy. And for the integral that remains, we could make use of the fact that we can factor out y from these guys. And that gives me negative integral from 0 to 1, y times 1 minus x divided by x plus y times 1 minus x. That means we could use a zero term so I'm going to write plus x and minus x as our special form of 0. And that means I have the integral from 0 to 1 of y times 1 minus x plus x divided by y times 1 minus x plus x. Cancellation. Minus x divided by, again, y times 1 minus x plus x dy. 
So first up, I have this negative integral from 0 to 1 of 1 with respect to y, which of course with these limits gives me negative 1. And we have these two negatives canceling out. So there's a positive sign, integral from 0 to 1 of x, which is a constant multiple right now in the y realm at least. So we have x times dy divided by y times 1 minus x plus x. And again, the fact that x is being held constant makes life quite easy for us as the structure we have is a logarithmic one. So this sorts out to x times the natural logarithm of one, uh, it's y times one minus x plus x divided by the derivative of the argument of the log term, which of course is one minus x on differentiation with respect to y, limits being zero and one. So in the limit as y approaches 1, we have x times log 1 minus x plus x. The x terms cancel out. We have log 1, which is 0. The entire structure collapses to 0. Minus in the limit as y approaches 0, we have x times log x. Okay, division by 1 minus x, and that's what i sub 1 sorts out to. Okay, so this was i sub 1, and we know exactly what it evaluates out to. That means we have twice the integral from 0 to 1 of x times negative 1 minus x times log x divided by 1 minus x dx. And again, this is not so bad. We have twice the integral from 0 to 1, negative x dx minus twice the integral from 0 to 1 of x squared times log x divided by 1 minus x dx. So the first term over here gives me negative 2 times x squared by 2. The 2's cancel out, limits are 0 and 1 again, so that gives me a negative 1. Okay, cool. Negative 1 minus twice the integral from 0 to 1. How exactly do I evaluate this thing now? Well, we could make use of a geometric series expansion because we see that we have x lying between 0 and 1. So if the absolute value of x is less than 1, then we can expand 1 minus x in terms of a geometric series. That is, we have the sum over the non-negative integers k of x to the k. So that's exactly what we're going to do. x squared times log x. And the reciprocal of 1 minus x turns into this infinite series. Okay. Negative 1 minus 2 integral from 0 to 1. And because these two are independent of the index variable k, we can take them inside the summation operator. Multiplying out the x terms gives me x to the k plus 2 times log x dx. Now we switch up the order of the integration and summation operators, giving me negative 1 minus 2 times the sum over k of the integrals from 0 to 1 of x to the k plus 2 times log x dx. And to evaluate the remaining integral, we could make use of a substitution giving us the gamma function, or better yet, we could make use of the well-known result that I have proved in an Instagram post, link in the description below. Don't forget to hit the follow button. And by the way, this is a nice time to like and subscribe. So we have the integral from 0 to 1 of x to the m times log to the m of x dx being equal to it's negative 1 to the m times gamma m plus 1 divided by n plus 1 to the m plus 1. So in this case, we have m, that is the exponent of the logarithm, being 1. Okay, so that's a negative 1. And we have gamma 2, which is again 1. And we have to divide by n, or the x term, that's k plus 2. So n plus 1 would be k plus 3, and we have this thing squared. Okay, so the two negative signs will cancel out quite nicely, which implies that i equals negative 1 plus twice the sum over k of 1 by k plus 3 squared. And this is, of course, related to the baffle problem. We have, if I transform from k to k plus 3... This means I have negative 1 plus twice the sum 
over k starting from 3 of 1 by k squared. And that equals negative 1 plus 2 times, for the Basel problem, it's pi squared by 6. But that includes the k equals 1 and k equals 2 terms. So for the sum starting from k equals 3, we have to subtract the k equals 1 term, giving me 1 by 1 squared, which is a 1, minus the k equals 2 term, which is a quarter. So we have minus 1 minus a quarter being negative 5 quarters. Okay. okay, plus 2, no wait, pi squared by 3, minus 5 by 2, negative 1 minus 5 minus pi by 2 would be 7 by 2. So the final result is pi squared by 3 minus 7 by 2, which is a pretty nice result for a really cool double integral. I hope you enjoyed the video. Be sure to like and subscribe. Thank you. See you next time.